on today's episode. Knowing how much flight battery I had left used to be a mystery to me, but now I've got a better handle on it. With the addition of a telemetry current sensor and a Lua script on my transmitter, it's now giving me a representation of the percentage and the milliampere hours left. It'll also count down every 10% and give me an audible warning. Also on a switch, we can look at a more detailed view, giving us the voltages, uh, minimum voltage, number of cells that we've got, and the maximum current there at 14.8 uh, amps. I think that's really neat, and I'm going to show you how to do it. My new Bixler has had its maiden flight. The weather broke, it was a beautiful day, the first good flying day we've had for over three weeks now. But I was so preoccupied with uh, flying it that I didn't take any footage. I will rectify that in a, in a new video. One thing became apparent though was that I didn't have a very good idea of how much battery was left on the machine. I'm using these 2200 milliampere hour three cell packs. Being essentially a powered glider, when you're gliding some of the time it's difficult to keep tabs on how much of the battery is left. Clearly I could put a timer on my Tyrannus, but just knowing how long you've been up doesn't really tell you either. You need to be able to measure the current that's been drawn and work out the milliampere hours. The receiver that I'm using has a telemetry function, so that's good. Temporarily power it up. We can see here at the top of the screen that it does give us an indication of the battery from the model, but it's uh, not exactly accurate. What to do then? Being a FR Sky guy, obviously, they do offer this telemetry sensor that connects in line with the battery pack and will send the current and I believe milliampere hours back to the transmitter. The sensor simply connects to the receiver smart port connection and there are a number of different sensors that you can get such as a variometer, a RPM meter and various other things. But to get me going all I really need is this current sensor. Let's now connect it up and see what information we can get from it. With the sensor in place, let's look now at setting up the Tyrannus. We go across in the menu until we find the telemetry page. We can see that in addition to the RSSI and receiver battery, and I realize now when I was looking at the display, it's actually indicating the receiver battery voltage and not the pack voltage. But we can see now we have the current sensor and the voltage sensor. One thing to point out is that each sensor has its own ID and the ID here is, is 3 for this particular sensor. Now we can do a quick check to make sure that the values indicated are where we expect them to be. To help in that process I've plugged in my wattmeter and we can see it indicating 12.32 volts here and 12.33 here, so I'm quite happy with that. Let's just throttle up and check what values we get then. <coughs> Saw a peak there, I think, of 16 and settling down to 14.7 or 8. On the wattmeter here, the maximum current, 15 amps, 15, 14.7. We're in the right ballpark. I believe we can adjust that, but it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. I'm quite happy with those values. With our sensors working, there's one additional sensor that we want to create. If we go down to add a new sensor, and this is where we want to calculate the milliampere hours. In the type field, we need to change that to calculated. And in the formula, we enter totalize. For the source, we select the current sensor. That's all that we need to do in there. So now we have our milliampere hour sensor indicating 127. All is good. Clearly what we want to be able to do is to display those on the 
front page. They're not there at the moment. If we press the menu button and then long press for the display, underneath NUMS and screen 1, need to go right up to the top of the list there. Let's make the first value the voltage, second value the current, and the third value milliampere hours. Now if we exit and long hold, we can see now the voltage, uh, current and milliampere hours. If we do another quick throttle up, <coughs> we saw there the current rise and the indication of the milliampere hours. All is good. To get the battery capacity remaining script running, I'll provide a link to this page. It describes everything that the script does and what we need to modify to get it to work for us. We need to set up a global variable on 7 with the capacity of the battery that we're going to be using. In my case, it's a 2200 milliampere hour. So I need to put 22 in global variable 7. I've chosen to do that using the OpenTX companion. So in global variable 7 milliampere hours, 22, that's all that we need to change. Obviously, I need to upload this changed model to the transmitter. Looking at the transmitter SD card, we go into the scripts for telemetry and we've copied over. These are the WAV files that it plays. That goes in its own folder. And of course, the script itself. Looking at the script here, there's not too much we need to change. The voltage sensor, VFAS, and the milliampere hour sensor that we set up, which we called milliampere hour. The only other thing to change is the switch that we want to use to put it into its verbose mode and I've elected to use switch SG in the middle position. Those changes have been made and the file uploaded to the SD card. All I need to do now is to put the SD card back into the transmitter, copy from the OpenTX companion the model setup and we should be good to go. With everything in place now on the Tyrannus, all we need to do is to long press the page. And now we can see the starting value. So 80% of my 2200 milliampere hour pack brings it to 1760 milliampere hours left to go. And as you saw at the beginning, it works really well. There was one other thing that wasn't very well documented, which I'll just uh, take you through. To display this, we need to change one of the settings. To do that, we press the menu key and then long press the page. And as we saw before, when I put just the numerical values from the sensor, we need to set it up on screen one, the first screen, as a script. So in the, in the field here, we scroll through until we get to script. And then clearly we select from the SD card the milliampere hour remaining script. So once again, when we exit and long page press, we get to our starting value. And then... When it gets to 70%, we should get an audible warning. It was difficult to hear there, but it did say 70% remaining. Next time I go to the field, there'll be no more mystery, at least with regard to the battery capacity.